happy December! Wow, I've just done a little 4K run. And in this video, I wanna to talk to you about an inspiring book I've just finished called Your Pace or Mine by Lisa Jackson. Let's get into it. If you're getting value out of this kind of content, like and subscribe, guys. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. Your feedback and your support means absolutely everything to us. So get in touch and let us know what you think. I read about Lisa Jackson in Runner's World magazine and I loved her funny column. And one of the things that she was talking about in her column was be a friendly runner. So she said all runners should wear a little badge that says I'm willing to talk. <sighs> Friendly. And she advocates this run, talk, run system where she likes to run and talk. So her column made me laugh and I immediately went onto Amazon and bought her latest book, Your Pace or Mine. It's an inspiring book. It's a, a great book, chock-a-block, full of all sorts of different runners, why they've run marathons and how they've run marathons and how they've overcome adversities to run marathons. I have to say by the end of it, I wanted to run a marathon. But one of the things that I loved the most was she talked about how she comes last in every marathon she runs, right? I dread that, I dread coming last. In fact, in the 10K race that I did with Dazzle, I actually scuppered myself by the worry about coming last. That's right, Mum. You even said at one point that you were running around and it felt like that everybody had already left. They'd packed the, the stadium away and that you were gonna get to the finish line and there'd be no one there. It would just be the normal park. And that's absolutely heartbreaking, but it goes to show how powerful the mind can be. You truly believed that you were that far behind that they'd packed up and left. Now it's really easy to fall into those kind of negative traps, but what I've learned from training and consistent training is you're not only training your body to be able to do certain things, run faster or run longer distances, you're training your mind so that your mind believes that your body can do it. If you already go into an activity with the attitude of, I'm going to do this and I don't care if I'm slow, I don't care if I'm fast, I'm just going to do this. Then you can achieve 17 marathons. Anyway, so when you read on, you get to find out that she's come last in the 17 marathons that she's run. 17. 17. Wow. Wow. Now, I wouldn't mind saying I've come last in 17 marathons. So I was mega, mega, mega impressed by Lisa. And it got me to thinking about what other beliefs and worries and fears do I have as a runner that I could put to bed. So I decided, right, that's it. I am going to run a half marathon to start with, but I would love to run a big marathon next year, the London Marathon. And I'd love to travel the world running marathons. I mean, how mad is that? What do you think, Dazzle? Oh my God, I absolutely love it. I think personally for me, running has not just been about my own fitness, and my own well-being but also it's something to share with like-minded people people who are interested in a healthier lifestyle people who are just a bit mad and just want to get out and run um, you meet all sorts of people but ultimately for me amongst all of the other things the socializing and the shared experience is totally where i find the passion for it so come on let's get on the marathon flex Oh my God. Let's start with a half marathon. I absolutely agree with that. But traveling the world to do marathons. Wow. So watch this space and this pace because Dazzle and I are going to undertake a training program to help me to get to a half marathon. I'm going to research the run, to run, walk, run technique. Have that as in my little back pocket. I'm gonna forget pace and how being last. I'm gonna forget all my worries about what I look like and all of that baloney that we fill our heads with. It's really interesting that you've said baloney 
because ultimately what it boils down to is is it an achievement or is it not it is 100 percent an achievement to just get out of bed in the morning you can get out of bed and do nothing else and if you appreciated that as an achievement and you were happy with that as an achievement you could spend the rest of the day lounging around and be absolutely content with it i mean take mount everest for example do you think because people aren't the first ones to climb it that nobody should climb it what's their achievement mean if they weren't first it means nothing it's an incredible achievement it's an incredible achievement to run 5k it's an in incredible achievement to start running so i think it's absolutely amazing and i'm just going to get out there and train and train for a purpose train for a purpose live for a purpose and one other thing that i really noticed is when I'm not training for something, I tend to fall off the wagon a lot quicker. So I might get out and do a run once or twice a week, but I don't do my strength work. I don't do my stretching, all the things that I've been talking about on this channel. I mean, <laughs> so in a couple of weeks time, Dazzle and I will be putting together our half marathon training plan. We'll invite you along the journey and hopefully inspire you to achieve some goals that you previously thought you couldn't do. Lots of love, everybody. Life and love, everybody. Bye. See you in the next one.